we are going to make turkey meatballs that actually taste amazing. These turkey meatballs are quick, easy, and are anything but dry, bland, and boring. After you make this recipe, you're going to know that these turkey meatballs have an address in Flavortown permanently. For the full ingredient list, check the description box below. But enough talking, let's get cooking. So we're going to start this off. We're going to make our meatballs first, and then we're going to make our sauce, and then we're going to put everything all together. First step before we make our meatballs is to get our oven preheated. I'm going to put the convection setting on, and I'm going to crank this all the way to 450 because we just want to get a nice browning on the outside of these meatballs in the oven. So we're going to start off with some ground turkey. These are already in like patty form because when I went to the supermarket this morning, they didn't have any ground turkey. This is the only one they had. So this is what we're going to use. So we got uh, two pounds of this ground turkey that we're going to put into these meatballs. Get rid of this paper. And even if I was going to make turkey burgers, I wouldn't start off with this. These things would turn into hockey pucks. So now this turkey cannot act alone in these meatballs. We are going to need a little backup. So we got this sweet Italian chicken sausage that we're going to mix with there. And this is going to be the second meat. And I went with a chicken sausage and not a pork sausage because chicken and turkeys are cousins. So I'm just going to split the casing on each one of these. You can start off with sausage that's not in the casing but I'm gonna remove the casing on these turkey sausage, or chicken sausages, rather. The sausages, not only are they gonna add a little bit of flavor because they're seasoned, this is where we're gonna get some fat in there because the turkey's pretty lean. Meatballs need some fat, otherwise they're gonna turn into little, little golf balls. We're gonna use that sausage to add the flavor and add the fat. So now we're gonna add some seasoned panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of these breadcrumbs. So to these breadcrumbs, I'm gonna add some whole milk and we're gonna put the milk in there until the breadcrumbs get nice and soggy. And you can do this all together, but I find I get better outcome when I do it this way. And while these breadcrumbs are soaking up this milk, I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients and the meatballs, and these are gonna go in last. So now we're gonna add some Pecorino Romano cheese. You can use Parmesan cheese, but I got the pre-shredded Pecorino Romano, so that's what I'm gonna use. So now I'm gonna take some fresh garlic and this super fine shredder, and I'm gonna pulverize this garlic going right into the meatball mixture. This garlic is gonna add really awesome flavor into the inside of the meatball, and you're never gonna even notice it's there. And now we're also gonna add a half an onion. And now we're gonna take this half an onion and we're gonna shred this right into the bowl. Anytime I can shred right into the bowl, I'm going to. So my setup is always keep the bowl here, put the shredder right on my chest, and I'm gonna hold it right on the edge of the bowl. And now from here, I'll shred all this nice onion right into the bowl. You don't have to dirty the cutting board. I don't have to get something else out. This is gonna add really nice flavor, but also moisture into the meatballs. Now we're gonna crack in two eggs. A little of my base seasoning. This is a blend of garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. I'm gonna put in a little chopped parsley. I already got this chopped up. I always have some of this lying around, so I always chop up more than I need. So whenever I need it, all I gotta do is reach in the fridge and here it is. So big pinch of that. Now you can see our breadcrumb mixture has soaked up all that milk, so this is gonna go right in. So before you start mixing, you gotta preheat the oven and you gotta have your baking sheet ready because you don't wanna have to wash your hands twice. We can mix this and then with our dirty hands, make our meatballs and then wash them one final time. We just gotta get in there with our hands and squish everything all together. You don't wanna over mix meatballs so you're trying to be as efficient with your mixing as possible, getting everything to be well incorporated. Those chicken sausages, the ground turkey, the shredded onion, the garlic, the cheese. Mm. And again, don't go crazy and over mix your meatballs. Over mixing meatballs is what leads to dense, rubbery meatballs. So once you think it's mixed up enough, that's good to go. So now I'm just gonna grab these and try to make them all the same size. So I'm aiming for slightly bigger than a golf ball, slightly smaller than a tennis ball. If you make them too big, they'll really flatten out. Again, slightly bigger than a golf ball, a little smaller than a tennis ball. Okay. 
right, I really maxed this tray out. And I got a little bit less. So I'm going to take this in a container. I'm going to make some mini meatballs in the air fryer for my daughter later. But, uh, you should be able to get at least most of them on there. Right before these go in the oven, I'm going to give them a light spray with olive oil just so we can get really good browning on the top. Remember, these meatballs don't need to get cooked all the way through. We're just trying to get some browning and some color, and we're doing it baking style. Not only because it uh, doesn't add too much oil when you're doing like some pan frying, but because we can do a large batch all at once and the cleanup super easy. So those are gonna go in the oven for about 15 minutes until they got a nice golden brown color. So now let's make our sauce while those are browning up. In our sauce are gonna go three things. So we're gonna put one carrot, the other half of that onion that we shredded into the meatballs and this little pile of garlic. We don't need to be super precise with how we're cutting everything because we're gonna use the immersion blender and blend it all together. But this is how I like to prep these for this sauce. And I'm gonna preface this with, there's a million ways to make tomato sauce. This is just one. So I'm going to peel this carrot. I'm going to use the same tower shredder that I shredded that onion with, and I'm going to shred this carrot. Shredding the carrot instead of cutting is going to be really helpful for cooking the carrot really quickly because the sauce is not going to cook a long time. We want to make sure that carrot gets cooked all the way through. Even when you cut it really small, it takes a while for carrots to cook as compared to these. So shredding it's definitely the way to go, and it's super fast. Now we'll put a small dice on this onion. And last but not least, we're just gonna trim off the woody root end of these garlic cloves and crush them. So now that everything's prepped, let's head over to the stove and get this sauce going. We're gonna take this high rim saute pan. I really like doing meatballs in here so you can get a nice layer of the meatballs all the way around. We're gonna heat this on a medium heat. I don't have to wait for the pan to heat up. So I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons of olive oil and in go the onions and the carrots. So I'm gonna mix these around so they're well coated in the oil and we do not wanna get any browning. We just wanna sweat these out. So I'm gonna mix around the carrot and the onion and as this pan heats up, they're gonna start to cook. But again, we're not looking for browning here. So if we gotta turn the heat down on this, once this thing starts going, we might do have to do that. Okay, this is starting to sound a little too high because I wanna get a really low saute on it. So I'm gonna turn the heat down to like a medium low and I'm just gonna keep gently moving this around the pan until we see these onions get a little translucent and the carrots get really soft. And if at any time I think the pan is too dry, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of oil. Once these onions have gotten a little translucent and the carrots start to wilt a little bit, we're gonna throw in our garlic. And we're just gonna saute that for a minute or two until you can really smell the garlic and it gets super fragrant. So once you can start to smell that garlic cooking, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste and we're gonna season with a little pepper and a pinch or two of salt. And now we're gonna give that a mix until the tomato paste is well incorporated into the softened onions, the carrots and the garlic. So we're gonna put in one can of crushed tomatoes And I'm always gonna clean out the rest of this tomato can by just adding a little bit of water and putting it in there. Now we're also gonna put in a can of diced tomatoes, juice and all. Now we're gonna mix that all around. And I still have my heat pretty low because I don't want this tomato sauce splattering all over the place. Now we're gonna put in a little dried oregano. This is the fresh stuff out of my mom's garden. Not too much, super potent dried oregano. But once we give that a mix, we're gonna cover it and bring it up to a simmer. So now that this is at a light simmer, again, we don't want it splattering and it doesn't need to boil yet. We're gonna use our immersion blender and blend this into a nice smooth sauce and get rid of all the chunky tomatoes, the onions and the garlic. And if you don't have an immersion blender, get one.
These immersion blenders are super easy to use. They're one less thing to dirty because it cleans up so easy. And if you don't have these, you can dump this out, throw this in a blender and then put it right back in. But this just works so much faster and easier. So we got a nice brown color on the top of the meatballs, but not only are we got browning on the top, we got really, really nice browning on the bottom. Look at that beautiful brown color. That's flavor, folks. And so now these are gonna go inside of our simmering sauce. And without breaking any of the meatballs, you gotta find room for all of them. I usually find that whatever meatballs I can fit on a sheet pan can go inside this 13 inch, but I guess this is like a four inch high rim saute pan. With the meatballs all covered in the sauce, we're gonna cover this and I'm gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes. So these meatballs have been simmering for about 20 minutes. Uh, I just shut the heat off. These are still super hot. So now I'm gonna tear in some basil leaves and I've been finding I've been tearing basil leaves more than chopping them. It's just a little easier and I like like the roughness of it. So I'm just gonna rip these basil leaves into little pieces. Doesn't matter how exact they are, how big they are. This is very rustic home cooking, and that is my favorite style of cooking. Sometimes I'll take the leaves and I'll put them on top of each other, so I'm ripping a few at the same time. And however they rip, they rip. And I'm a basil nut, so I'm gonna put a lot in. Maybe you wanna put in a little less, but I'm probably putting in about 15 big leaves of basil. So now without breaking any of the meatballs, I'm gonna to try to get this basil inside the sauce. The basil doesn't need to cook with the sauce. In fact, if you put it in a little early, it's gonna turn black. So what we do is we just put it in a little bit after so it lends its flavor into the sauce, but at the same time, it's not getting overcooked and turning into black grossness. And just the heat of the sauce right now is definitely enough to release the, the flavor of the basil into the sauce. So now with no heat, I'm just gonna leave this covered for about five minutes before we test these meatballs. So now let's plate these meatballs. And now just to really make the colors pop, to really excite people when you put these on the table, just a little sprinkle of that parsley on top. Now look how amazing these turkey meatballs look. They look absolutely spectacular. I can't wait to try one. So let's try one of these meatballs and see how we did. So before we try this, let's dress this up a little bit. So we're gonna put a little extra sauce on top. We're gonna take this Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese and shave this right over the top. And there's enough cheese on my meatball when you can't see the meatball anymore. We're just gonna cut right into this with the fork. Super juicy, I mean, you can still see that the meat inside is very, very moist. That this does not look dry. It doesn't look very dense. There's some nice pockets in there, but the taste test tells all. Let's see how this tastes. Mmm, that is absolutely amazing and delightful. And I can barely tell that it's turkey. This meatball has it all. It's got flavor, it's not dense, it's super light, super fluffy, and the sauce is absolutely unbelievable too. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna eat all your meatballs and you're gonna have some extra sauce and you can do whatever you want with that. You can make pizzas, you can make pasta. I'm gonna eat a few more of these meatballs while I'm doing that. Check out one of my original videos. So this is my meatballs and sauce. I'll see you there. Thanks.